Hi, I'm Vandana Santhal, Brand Ambassador for Dress My Craft, and I'm super excited to be here today sharing with you some neat little ideas, techniques, and tools using this one of a kind unique product launched by Dress My Craft called Shrink Prink. Shrink Prink is basically a flexible frosted glass sheet that comes in A4 size, and these come in different quantities, color labeled accordingly. Do check them out according to your requirement on the Dress My Craft website where they have launched also some fun, innovative tools to help you work with this product. Due to its unique features, do not forget to read the instructions shown on the label as this will help you to understand the nature of the product as this product works only brilliantly with the help of a crafter's heat gun and please refrain using heat gun that are meant for industrial purposes as it may damage the sheet beyond recovery or using hair dryers for that fact that will not be sufficient to break the fibers and shrink them into hard plastic. That being said, let's talk about this sheet a little bit more. Now this sheet has a glossy side to it and a frosted side to it. Each side has its own unique features and creates a beautiful dramatic effect as an end result which you will be able to see as I move along the project. Before I can move along with the project and share with you some ideas and techniques on how to work with the shrink print sheets, I would like to take a moment and share with you what fun idea I came up with. Now the concept was totally new to me but I still wanted to push along and see if this DIY project would be absolutely in my lane for creating some sensational embellishments that could go on my home decor products. So I just made use of some glass containers that were there, plain glass containers which were lying in my house. I just wanted to create some embellishments. These were printed out by using my printer Canon G3000 which is an inkjet printer. The sentiment was also printed along on the printer and now these flowers that you see I had made them using the flower making dies from Dress My Craft. Once I understood how brilliant this concept is and how easy it has been to prop up on some glass containers, I just went ahead and pulled out my decorative platters which are plain glasses or some drinking glasses which were just for decorative purposes or candle holders, anything and everything that had possibility of propping it up with shrink prink embellishments, I just managed to do that. Besides that, I also wanted to create some miniatures using the mixed media concept and I went ahead, propped them on old brushes and created a kind of a beautiful layout which I could always gift it to my loved ones or I can just use it as a table topper on my craft studio. I'm just going to set aside these for now and bring your attention to some of the tools that you definitely need to work with this product. The first one being the heat resistant tweezers launched by Dress My Craft. This is a must have if you're working with this product. This tweezer is uniquely designed with its silicone tips to counteract the heat transferring to the tool. That means this will protect your hands from excessive heat and help you to structure your embellishments to utmost satisfaction. So for the project today on hand, I had decided to create some mixed media embellishments using the shrink print sheets and also to create some flowers using the Dress My Craft flower making dies along with the Easy Cut die cut machine. Now I narrowed down my choices to these three flower making dies. The first one being the big flower set that has five different sizes in a pack. The other one is the curved flower set die that has 12 dies in a pack. And the last but not the least is to create a flower set that has a total of 10 dies in a pack. I have also taken a note of the shrinkage that occurs when creating flowers. So my suggestion at this point would be the bigger the flower, the better result you will have to structure your flowers beautifully. So let's create some flowers using this die called create a flower set. 
Now this set comes with 10 dies varying in sizes. I took the biggest die in the set and I wanted to size up my shrink print sheet. So I'm just placing that acrylic plate on the platform. This is the sheet that I'm going to run through the machine. I'm just facing the die downwards and I'm just adding that acrylic plate on top of it and running through the machine. There you see what a beautiful shaped flower we have. Besides this, I've also pulled in this set called the Big Flower Set. Now this set comes with five dies. I've just used the first two sizes which I'm sharing on the screen. And I've pre-cut my shrink print sheets according to this size and prepped up for my embellishments. So I had some of the basic coloring materials in my stash. I had this charcoal pencil from Camlin Company which is soft, the Stadler white coloring pencil. And at the background you can see I have this Derwent ink tense pencil which I tend to use normally and some Copic markers. The general idea is to try these out onto the shrink print sheet and see what fits to your uh, liking. I made a reference board using the Copic coloring markers because that was the only one that was working towards my comfort zone. So to each its own. Do definitely try to buy in these Micron pens. They are very archival rich and they are very good for detailing. Especially now you can see that I'm using this charcoal pencil which, clear, which creates a very nice uh, kind of a black effect onto your shrink print sheets. And they are quite economical. Here is the reference board that I have created using the Copic markers and this will help me to create a map of what are the color values that I need and which will help me to color my embellishments. Before coloring, do not forget to prep your table with the crafting mat from the Dress My Craft. These are so good to use. They help you to keep the stain off from your table. It protects your surface. So definitely do invest to buy in one. So there is no particular technique to my coloring. I just randomly am coloring this color called as the raw silk from Copic markers. I've already tested out the color, so I'm good to go. I'll be sharing all the colors that I've used for the project. You can go ahead and give it a try. Before I could start with the heat setting process, I have prepped up my surface with a craft mat from Dress My Craft, but I would like to be doubly sure as I have a glass plate underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this embossing pad from Dress My Craft and this is just to give me some kind of stable platform so that my flowers don't move around when I start heat setting it. So this will keep the flower in position, but on top of that what I'm going to do is just to give me more more uh, safety for the heat resistant I'm going to use a silicone mat and this is a great um, tip if you're working with uh, the shrink print sheets I think this works really very well and you could just push that on top of the embossing pad underneath and just you know keep the flower in position and in order to create a more wave to my flower, what I've done is before I just heat set it just like that using the dye. But then I felt this was way too flat. So what I have done is I've just, you know, given a bit of snip in between the petals so that it can create more waves like this. So you have a bit of more a ruffled kind of look to the flower. And what I'm going to do is just heat set it. 
remember to use the crafter's heat gun as only that will be helpful and keep rotating it so that it doesn't concentrate on one place remember that i'm using it on the frosted side not on the glossy side and you can see the petals crinkling up beautifully at this point i don't want a perfect flower i just want a ruffled imperfect flower so that is what i was aiming for so i'm just going to straighten them up here and there but leave them as a ruffled look that i needed Here is where things got really interesting for me and I wanted to see if I could print on these shrink print sheets and I have a Canon G3000 inkjet printer so I do all my printing work on this printer so I just pushed through it I wanted to see what is the effect like if I had to print it on the frosted side If you have a printer and you want to try it out don't try it on the glossy side because either way the ink is not going to set on it on frosted side just remember to keep your ink setting at the lightest and choose other paper mode that is very very important don't choose as glossy photo paper or inkjet paper nothing of that just choose plain paper that's good enough to go and now you can see how beautifully that print is just popping out I just went ahead and I printed out as many as possible prints that could you know help me to move along with this project this is so time friendly within minutes you can just fuzzy cut these elements out and then you can just heat set it you could you could color it but I just wanted it as a black and white kind of image even the colored butterflies that I printed out out of this printing machine turned out to be fabulous If you're printing out any kind of colored elements onto your shrink print sheets through the help of a printer set your ink settings to the lightest and remember when you use a heat gun on top of these elements it will go one tone higher so if you want to get into any kind of detailing with your black inks this is the best time to do it or punch any holes get all those nitty gritty kind of detailing done and sorted before you heat set the embellishment This is a must because once it gets hardened it is a very di difficult task to go about it. So I'm just going to heat set this embellishment and with the help of a wooden stamping block what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in more control and try to flatten the embellishment as you will be seeing in seconds now how I go about it just remember to keep distributing the heat all over the shrink print and not concentrating on one spot what will happen is it will start creating a kind of a hole a burn mark on the shrink print sheet and then it will be useless for you to use for your projects so just keep distributing that heat all over the element in one go and slowly you'll see the sheet picking up on that heat and starting to crinkle 
So what I've realized with the help of the silicon mat underneath is it gives me that kind of that heat, uh, that extra few seconds it gives me. So this, the transference of the heat is still de there between the sheet and the shrink ring sheet. So what is going to happen is I'm just going to take the stamping block and I'm going to take advantage of those two, three seconds that I'm getting extra. And I'm just going to flatten my embellishment out using that, that three second gap way. Now I'm being very delicate and trying to not pull too much of it because what will happen is on some delicate areas it might tend to chip off. So just be very slight about it. If you apply the right heat to it, it will automatically, you know, um, not stick to each other and it will just open out. So a bit of practice is needed at this point. I think if you do it one, once or twice, you should get the hang of it. On a lighter note, this wasn't the first time that I got my bow right. I actually this was the seventh time that I got the bow right. So if you're just wondering if everything is acting out perfectly for me, it's not so. I had to have a lot of practice in order to get the understanding of how much control I needed and not to get overwhelmed because of the curling process that's happening with the shrink ring sheets. But you can see as I'm flattening it out how beautifully it's taking that that shape. The, the lines are becoming more clear, the ink is getting a bit darker, so everything is good to go. I'm very, very happy with this result. Remember that your wooden block should not have any kind of indentations on it, like any kind of grooves or any kind of design on it. It has to be a flat kind of block with no designs on it. That will help you not to get that design onto the shrink ring sheet because I have been doing some other techniques and sadly those indentations fell onto the sheet while it was hot. So it rendered completely useless to me. But look at it. It's so pretty to look at. Now I took one more of this uh, print, vintage theme print that I really liked and I had a particular idea in my mind. This is where I was waiting to share with you all the surprise that I wanted to, I wanted to scream literally at the top of my voice and say this is so good to go on a different background and I wanted it to go on some kind of home decor product that I was aiming right at the start of it. And I thought like this, this was the perfect embellishment to complete that whole picture. You could always use a heat tweezer to, you know, uh, pull out and try to straighten it out. But I was feeling very comfortable at this point just to use with my fingers. And it was just perfect. Uh, there, is, there, there was no iota of, of kind of regret in my mind if this would work in my favor or not. There you go. Look how brilliant that looks. Imagine this being popped onto your canvases or onto your mixed media projects or on your scrapbook. It's amazing. So as you can see, like I've just layered up those embellishments onto my glass container. This is a glass vase that I had in my collection. This is a smaller size. The other one is a bigger size. And I just wanted, you know, some kind of sentiment to tie all my embellishments together. Even that has been printed out from the printer. And I made some flowers using the DMC dies that you saw earlier. Now, at this point, I was so thrilled with this kind of background. And this gave me so many more ideas to come up with. I was super, super excited that this product did not come with its limitations. 
it was just you know good to go with your home decor projects besides being used on your jewelry or making as a trinket charm or being used for you know some small kind of embellishment this made all the difference to me and this was the highlight for me this totally changed my way of thinking towards shrink print and i thought this product has some endless possibilities by saying that i would like to thank you all for sitting patiently through with me this has been a quite a long video but i hope that whatever i've shared it has been done with a great tremendous amount of hard work on my end and i hope that you will definitely enjoy and come up with new ideas on your end thank you so much for stopping by